Hello, welcome to another podcast, Avid Perception. We got our core team here. We got uh, Mr. Mies. How you doing, brother? Good, good. How about you? Mr. Ray, Air hey. Force. How's it going? <laughs> no, that's not how the the plane sounds, right? Like the Is it more like Top Gun? Maybe some of them sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. We might have them in Area 51. Oh my God. I'm still working Why on them. Why is it called Top Gun when you use planes? Uh, Should we be call it Top Plane? Uh, because it usually means like, uh, he, he knows that better, but they explain it in the movie, actually. It usually yeah. means oh, like that's it? like the hardest motherfucker out there. Yeah. But why are they guns so hard? Th- that's what it is. That's the strongest weapon you got. That's why they call it Top well, Gun. a rocket launcher. Why Top Rocket Launcher? No, it's usually <laughs> human being. Okay, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't but really. That's not human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they have guns. They have no, guns they on the They have to have a human. It's like, who's your Top Gun? Who's your that's the Top Gun. Yeah. Spider. That's what it's okay. called. Okay, yeah, it's true. It's like, that's the Top Guy. Uh-huh. And they <laughs> that's the, well, num- guy. the number one. <laughs> the number w- numero uno. You guys just went it. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> So, have you seen this uh, Drake? To anyone. Can you do something some for me? Yeah. Yeah. You see the one where he's wearing cardigan and going to like WWE, like uh, ring? Yeah, it's like a game. WWE yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw this one? I think so. Uh, yeah. Have you seen the reaction? His 21 uh, Savage reaction? No. Yeah, he reacted to it. He reacted? Uh, yeah. What did he say? I was like, oh, why are you guys doing that to Drake? You could something? tell he wanted to laugh, but he was like, I don't want to offend. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah. you do some for me? <laughs> yeah, he was about to burst out laughing, but he held it in. It is it is really funny. It is yeah, it is funny. Yeah. All right. How was your week, guys? Oh, it was good. My week was good. Yeah. I had an amazing week too. What about you or me? Oh yeah, just super packed full. Packed full? Mm-hmm. With what? Pack. It packed it was impactful? Impact or packed? Uh, unpacked. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. it was impactful. I'm just unpacking right now. It was chock full of activities. Oh. Um, yeah, you could say that. A so bunch of packs. Was it a chock full of activities? Uh, there was chocolate. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes, I like chocolate. Yeah, yeah I, I like chocolate. Indian accent. See, I like chocolate. Well, how was it? I'm sorry. I like chocolate. I'm in not Indi- Indian. Well, oh, <laughs> but it's it's kind of similar. Yeah, it's just been wow. seventy years. Wow, yeah. you're Chinese, I mean, they right? used to, they used to be one country though. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not Chinese. How do you know that? I do not know what this chocolate is. <laughs> 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 what the hell are you talking about? How is this that good? <laughs> I sell it at my store. <laughs> I do not have. Kids come and buy it. I do not have. I do not have I it. Make a profit for my family. You get out. Howard is a loving mother. Exactly. <laughs> we do not have any chocolate. Yeah. See, and this is we'll never get canceled because he's one of them. Oh yeah, but me too though. Thank you. Come again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. <laughs> so you guys ate elk, right? For the, is it for the first time for you? I've had it before, but this is after a long time. Mine for the first time. Oh. Nice. Yeah. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Very juicy, yeah. Juicy. No, uh, there's no like sleepiness after. You know, like you eat a big burger, yeah, you kind of sleepy. But it's, it's like only in burger like form. <laughs> well, at what? this restaurant, yeah. I mean, you could probably have as like a like a steak, maybe. Yeah, like a deer steak, elk yeah. steak. Yeah. You think you can? Yeah, I think maybe. Joe Rogan eats that. Yeah. Well, he, he has it, so it's a different story. Yeah. Oh. No, but as a passerby, but he told me like Restaurant Depot mm-hmm. uh-huh. got some of that stuff. Yeah, they yeah. have it. They do have it. They have elk. They have deer. They have um, bison. A bunch of random st- yeah, bison. Yeah, bunch of random <laughs> rattlesnake, <laughs> crocodile, yeah, ostrich, human. snake, yeah, <laughs> alien, <laughs> Martian meat. <laughs> um, only on Wednesdays. But yeah. you know the thing with Restaurant Depot though is like you go there is like the smallest package is like mm-hmm. forty pounds. Of course. Yeah. They expect you on a restaurant, you know, you're yeah, buying course. for a restaurant. But all the brown people like us with big families. Of course, you buy for Of course, we buy, yeah, we buy, buy it in bulk. <laughs> buy everything in bulk. One of us open one restaurant, you see like 10,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's halal, like, halal elk, they run it. Chicken. They run that place. So you uh-huh. go to your cashier. So, restaurant do you own? Uh, my kitchen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's called My Kitchen? Um, Who's your first chef? Oh, my wife. Mm. Yeah. Who are your customers, my kids? They really question you? <laughs> no, they don't. It's just if they ask you that, you give answers like, oh, it's my 
So, Mr. Ramiz, where are we located? We're located in, in our space. Which space? Um, the space where where space it's free continuum. It's free space. So, <laughs> <laughs> this dude just keep cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Okay. Uh -huh. So it's like you're a citizen of the world. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Or I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's a netizen. I'm an alien. You're an alien. Beep boop. Okay. Are um, you a, a reptile alien? Reptile. I cannot reptilian. get information. Reptilian. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot get some yeah, information. Yeah, you know because they're shapeshifters. Mm. Uh, Bro, so maybe. much insanity yeah. going on right now. People saying like the randomest things. I swear to God. Oh uh, yeah. Everybody's <coughs> like. What are you looking for? Huh? Nothing. What? Huh? Really? What's up? Nothing. Okay. Facebook. Facebook what about Facebook? Mark is he? He's, uh, he's wanna, totally human. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's way. not. There's no way. Yeah, I, I don't believe him. Oh. I really don't believe you, bro. Okay. I, I, I think because the dev evidence of pictures that we have. Of him, like, you know, eating eggs. Eggs? Yeah. What do you mean? He eats eggs. Reptilian. So, I eat eggs, too. Uh oh. <gasps> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's a giveaway. Uh oh. Giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> don't you see all that? Uh, and I eat them boiled too. Uh oh. Don't, don't you see all that? Uh, you can eat them raw too. If you yeah, want. of course. I used to, man. When well, I used to work right? out when I was a kid, like yeah. it's the stupidest idea that I ever <laughs> did. I swear to God, because like you, you, you saw like Rambo, <laughs> you saw like Rambo. Uh, uh, Rocky. Rocky, sorry, yeah, Rocky, Rocky and I'll put like two eggs and yeah. like oatmeal and like protein shake, and I'll take that in the morning before the gym. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes I have diarrhea. <laughs> 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 I, I later, I later learned that that is actually salmonella, baby. So oh, yeah. Man. No, you got to get the like the organic ones. The organic yeah, the eggs. brown ones are yeah, a lot better. Ones. Of course. Right. Don't buy like the $1. sixty, twelve oh, pack. No. These are not <laughs> eggs at all. That's Where do you find price for eggs like that? <laughs> well, go to 99 cents. 99 cent <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I swear to God, they have food, but it's like Dollar nothing tree. that you want to eat. No, what would you? No, yeah. yeah. Dollar tree. No, I, I'm not saying why would you. Yeah. I'm just saying I experienced it before. They don't taste like eggs. Mm. They don't sound like eggs. And they don't sound like <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Hello, are you egg? <laughs> I, I swear to God, bro, it's like diluted. I like, kind of like washed yeah. up egg it's kind like of washed. thing. It's yeah, like washed, washed up flavor, eggs. washed up stuff. Like exactly. It's watered down. They put, like bleach. they put water in the egg. It's just like a <laughs> but why is it cheap though? Like why is it so cheaper than like? They probably, probably get it from the. Like, <laughs> it's probably fake, man. Honestly, they probably just make it in a factory. <laughs> they probably get it from the ghetto eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I get it from uh, like retarded chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Ramin, that laugh. Oh my god. Dude. Sorry. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> but that is hilarious. Yeah. So what is the difference really? Like why eggs are different in price? Uh I think brown eggs are they're no, like not I'm talking about no, sorry. like 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 nine the, cents. The white and yeah, the ninety cent and like the regular uh, regular. I think uh, it has to Walmart do with um condition like of the egg, the chickens where they live. <laughs> yeah, you know, they live in like a clean environment where they're uh, maybe cage free yeah. and the other ones are like completely caged. Imprisoned chicken eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. As soon as they become an egg, they put a cage on it. <laughs> Lifetime and that and that cage. solved the question: the egg or the chicken first? You know. Yeah. yeah what came the first? The yeah. cage came first. <laughs> the cage. <laughs> <laughs> the cage came first. The cage came first. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, it's the most thing that actually increased in price is eggs. Fifty-nine mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. yeah, man. It's I went insane. to a store earlier. I saw a pack of dozen for seven dollars. Oh my god! And that was cheap, <laughs> the cheap ones. Wow. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I think uh, I, bro, that yeah, it's true. It's true because like the two packs, even in Costco, is like thirteen or fourteen, so it's the same amount. Yeah. The the five dozen. The two dozen. No, there's no more five dozen. No more. Yeah, it's only two. It's oh like my god. it's only twenty four. Two dozen, and it's like 
almost the price of the five dozen. That's how you know society is collapsing. When you <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> eggs. It's all these yeah. reptilians eating that eggs, bro. Exactly. Know, They're you. sucking it up. Hillary Clinton and Mark Zuckerberg are just <laughs> slurping up all the eggs. They're just like <laughs> with their like long tongues, long slimy tongues. <laughs> <laughs> I should go on Facebook right now yeah. and just yell at Mark. Stop eating all the eggs. Damn it, Mark. <laughs> Damn it, Mark. Yeah. Share some with you. Well, I guess we're not brothers. Why do yeah. you guys think uh, Mark oh. Zuckerberg so hated? Is it just because he's weird, or is it? No, I think it's because he got wealthy, young, and he have so much power. Yeah, yeah, it's it's because he knew that he's like you know hurting society. He's doing things on purpose. No, no like he's like selling people's intention. information, and everything. Oh, he's proud about it. Okay, you know? I'm not talking mm. about the last two years. Okay, yeah. I'm talking like in general when he started, it was like any startup idea, you know, mm. and uh, he wanted to develop it. Didn't he? Didn't he put um, like his team, like he put his team in fire or something just to save himself? What? Or, like, like he like put his team in a fire? <laughs> Damn. No. I mean, and like, that is another. I mean, yeah, like cold blooded, right? Cold no, blooded. like he, he used his team to help him. Once he got power, he just like you know left them. Yeah, like the whole argument that he started uh, all by himself. Facebook. No, he didn't. He had like the twins. He had a, team, yeah, yeah the tw- Winklevoss twins. I think their name. Winklevoss. And bro, they only got like 160 million after like 33 or 40 billion. Now, what's yeah. worth a meta? Yeah. But it's but Facebook right now is shrinking. It Small. is because it's gonna blow up again. But no, I mean no. it's gonna get bigger, but no, think, no, I don't think so. No. Because you know, they came out with the meta thing, exactly, and, and they like, put everything into the meta correct. Yeah, yeah and it's like nobody cares. About that. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, it's like, cares, what the fuck? I can't eat. What do yeah. you mean I can sit down and like find yeah. an imaginary job? You could be in a virtual like world. The sandbox, like, motherfucker. I can't afford healthcare. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my da- my daughter just lost her leg from infection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you can be a, a tree in a virtual reality. Oh, you wow. can build your own home. Yeah. Oh. Or you live in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> or, or be like one of those mud. You saw this like Thai or like Asian people who are like doing mud houses and like they go. To, yeah. It's so brilliant and simplistic yeah. and beautiful. Mm. Oh, yeah. Vietnam, Cambodia. So interesting. Yeah, they do that. Yeah. I have you actually been to Vietnam, right? I haven't. I've been to Thailand, but I haven't been to Vietnam yet. I want to go, though. One Thailand is beautiful. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard it's you like, said you have been to Thailand? I've been to Thailand, yeah. Okay. So where did you, like, just uh, like a uh, base or like you really like had a free time around no, there? Just check it out. Just for a vacation. Okay, good. Yeah, good. just for a week in uh, Bangkok, the capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like really nice. Like I was surprised like when I got there. I thought I was going to be like, oh, it's Thailand. It's going to be like a third world country. But no. No, no. This no. shit is yeah. modern. I'm like, talking I about agree. like it's so clean. Everybody's really nice. yeah very like everything is cheap mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. a whole meal like if you wanted like a really nice whole meal it's like five bucks it's crazy yeah five dollars for like steak or something yeah like Whoa. shrimp that's why like, people go to like thailand when they have like a coding or like work from home or stuff it's yeah. like well i'm gonna live there beautiful place equator it's beautiful. Yeah, you know? beautiful women oh well <laughs> <laughs> you gotta check you gotta check first bro uh, check yourself boy <laughs> Apparently, actually, Apparently not. Singapore is really beautiful, bro. Yeah, Singap- and it's one of the safest countries in uh, in Asia. Yeah. So uh, everybody have like a like a, a good means for living over there, mm-hmm. and if you steal anything, it's ten years in prison. Oh, wow. So the dude was like filming. I swear to God, he left his laptop in a McDonald's. I seen that. You seen that one? Yeah. And it was like this is Singapore, you know, like nobody really is is doing anything or like to because pe- the government people are I, scared yeah you don't want to go to prison for 10 years exactly yeah and i heard the prisons are way worse than here like way worse like okay like uh like if you like spit out chewing gum or whatever it's like Get the mic closer to you. Oh, my bad. Uh-huh. like i heard it's like uh you ever seen that series where they have uh they have like traffickers or whatever like drug traffickers and then they it, go to like a foreign country and uh-huh. they get like imprisoned I forgot what it's called. It's like on the History Channel. Or uh, something. Narcos? I think so. I want to say something like that. But like people like go over there. They don't know the laws. They're like, oh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to, to what? bring uh, bring drugs or whatever on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. They, get, they get in prison. And they're like, <laughs> it's like, this is so retarded. Yeah. And like they say, they don't know. Of yeah. course, they're trying to like hustle yeah. over there. Yeah. Of course. 
Yeah, it's pretty intense over there. Uh, the drug charges. Yeah. Dubai too, like weed. Russia. It's, it's well, no, Russia because it's just a political thing. Uh, Dubai, bro, it's twenty five years in prison if you're caught with weed. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Alcohol is okay. But <laughs> it's like, but if I swear to God, what really? you yeah, but but weed is like pretty, uh, pretty, pretty. Like I don't know that like drugs in, in Dubai is pretty like serious crime. Yeah, it's crazy. So Ramiz, talking about drugs. alcohol, uh-huh. you know what alcohol means in 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 Arabic? Al ghul, which Al-Ghul. means it brings the demon out of you. Mm. Ghoul, you know what ghoul is? It's just a like gin, genie, like a demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But j- from from the bad ones, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, which is pretty interesting when uh, we discuss this book, Outwitting the Devil, mm-hmm. <coughs> or at least we're trying. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can get us some time there. The the main subject, bro, is the drifting, Ray. I wanna okay. I wanna like get your point of view because sometimes when I listen to stuff, I don't really uh recognize the full like, you know what i'm talking about i want to see other point of view like did yeah, you understand oh, exactly or you had like maybe a different idea or like a view to understand it basically how i understood it was in the book right drifting how they how they were saying it is it's like not having a purpose and and when you don't have a purpose like when you don't know you know what you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. uh your life is meaningless basically and when your life is meaning when you have no meaning that leads you to, you know, negative uh, tendencies, like negative habits, mm-hmm. you know, maybe whether it be like, you know, it could be drugs or, you know, being lazy, other negative tendencies. Mm-hmm. So I think everybody, especially men in general, mm-hmm. they need to have a clear, defined purpose. They need to be knowing what they're doing in life. If they have a certain skill that they want to be mm-hmm. that they're good at they mm-hmm. need to pursue that that's beautiful. and they need to always you know never give up on that so that's what i took away that's beautiful what yeah. about you bro um <laughs> <laughs> it's just i swear to god man it's just <laughs> he's like it was cool <laughs> 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 when you try to laugh, try to, to laugh like this, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like like yeah, like you sneeze, like at the COVID, uh-huh. a little bit like that vampire. I'm okay, Ramiz is just like a, <laughs> b- the funny Buddha over here. Okay, come oh, yeah. on, brother. Amazing wit and amazing jokes. So, what is your perspective, uh, Buddha, on uh, the devil? Good book. <laughs> very good. well that's uh, that's a very good insight thank, yeah, thank you. you thank, thank you. you no but like what is the the key because you told me you heard like an hour and a half uh we're close gonna, to yeah, yeah. we're we gonna like want to finish it and like really go deep dive, dive on it and i'll, oh, I'll yeah. send you the points so we're gonna talk about it because he said like that is 10 or 11 or something ways or tricks and we want to go through each one next time and uh discuss how you would skip that how Ramiz would skip that you know what I'm what we do to like prevent stuff like this but these boys are really good they don't smoke they don't drink they don't do any uh, psychedelics or narcotics or recreational drugs uh, one of them is uh, military one of them almost in the military with his family. <laughs> 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 he he, got he was almost in special forces. <laughs> special forces. <laughs> kind of, yeah, bro. Like, like he got family. So, but, and that's beautiful because it's already in the book that said that the way he would actually grab or take people from the, their goal or like the, the, the path, mm. you know, and the decisive act is by just being, there is no system. There is yeah. no patterns. There is no like checkpoints, you know, and that's usually what happened with most people is like whenever like some shit happened in their life, everything started window because they isolate themselves out. They start to drift, which is going away from their purpose. And then they're alone and then mm. they do drugs and whatever. But the, the idea was like you're never alone. We're part of the same soul of god you know we're part of the of same collective so the, the thing that is actually pretty interesting for me is that the more you have people around you they can keep you in check 
you know that's very like true. yeah so you're not you're not by yourself right like you guys even i'm not even like you uh, remember like the first time we come here you guys were vacuuming and stuff now the place is a lot better still needs vacuuming though but it's <laughs> way better yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm saying and it yeah. is because like have good supportive group of people you know so mm. it's like keep me in check and keep myself in check and know like this is really not the the path that is supposed to be done like they mm -hmm. help you to focus they help you to push because you see another loving caring people friends you know family mm -hmm. called in general try to, to tell you that like you're not in this by yourself yeah you want to say something right La yeah like absolutely like what you were saying like what i was going to piggyback off like keeping each other in check it's like we're on a road right and we don't have any navigation or any mm -hmm. map or anything like that so we don't know our wh where the main goal is where we're trying to go to is we, mm -hmm. we don't we don't know by mm -hmm. ourselves so we need to depend on others who do know the way to show us the way and, the, and to keep us on the right path. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was kind of like a, a good like metaphor for that, for what you were saying. Yeah. And once you find out the way, it's good to show others too, not just exactly. keep knowledge to yourself. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ramiz is throwing hella shade right now. <laughs> he's, okay. bombs. So like, he's he's just mad at me because I just disappeared for a year and come back with a different license. And then uh, I was like, dude, what the yeah. fuck? You know, I was like, <laughs> 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 Where were you? I was like, I try to work on me. But what I understood, which is actually yeah, pretty yeah. good to his point, is that you, you like you can go fast alone, but you will never go far by yourself. Mm -hmm. no. you, yeah, never. never. So it's like, okay, I tried to go fast and I kept hitting a wall for whatever blessing that is going on from the licensing you know they take a year to process mm. anything for me especially so i'm grateful for everything but that actually put a light in my mind as maybe that is not what i'm uh passionate about and it's true it's not what i'm passionate about mm -hmm. uh, i want to do more i want to be able to like and and from this like came to the idea of oh okay so this is not it's a blessing in the sky because if you even they give you that license correctly and you're already doing your thing you are going to be miserable working or doing something you didn't like or love for a long time so that's actually pretty beautiful that i i look at it the right way the the, the god way which is any struggle or hardship that we go through is supposed to teach us something yeah. you know it's a yeah. lesson it's not really supposed to destroy you because like you know no, it, no. yeah it's not it's not uh it's not necessarily a wholly bad thing it's only a bad thing if you don't learn from it correct yeah and the lesson gonna keep repeating itself yes brother yeah i just want to go back to how you say you need connections um that's where family comes in you know it's mm -hmm. important to have family important to like stay connected with your family mm -hmm. um even if your family like there's someone they're people who do these bad things it's still good to at least connect with them because they're still your closest people you have and if they can't show you the way why can't you show them the way mm -hmm. and then once they become you know better people um they can support you in the good causes you guys can work together um you know help each other avoid you know get falling to like mm -hmm. the you know the wrongdoings and everything yeah and he's pretty much very correct about that the more i isolate myself and you're like yeah i'm studying for like uh, at the time before the exam i was i'm, I'm speaking about my experience uh, i was studying for like t 18 to 20 hours a, at a day before like the last month and uh, it took like six months of like i'm not doing anything i'm just the only free time or the only time i have for myself i work out that's it mm. uh, the rest i was just like you're just on a freaking thing memorizing you know material yeah. material material and isolating myself from everything you know from the community from culture from friends from people and so and, and i hear i see that a lot is like disappear for six months it's like yeah but uh, what what do you mean disappear that's actually the the soul when you're alone from that book is that's when you're easiest to pick on you know mm. like you know the the pick and the, st and the stand when there's like a couple of uh, yeah when they're together they're stronger mm -hmm. type of thing yeah you correct know story <coughs> yeah please say it there's a story about a old farmer who um has a farm um apple farm i believe and he has four ba four boys and these four boys um they're all just about a year or two years apart each Mm -hmm. um and uh supposedly they're like just very um they're very um they hate each other you know like often they would get into fights they would like literally beat each other up 
um, leave it like on the streets, or whatever. Just like try to kill them because they just hate each other. What they try to kill each other? Yeah, these these uh, these brothers they hate each other. Wow. And so this farmer, he's he's like he got sick from something, and now he's on a deathbed, like he's about to die. And um, his wife, uh, he knows that his wife can't take care of the farm, so it's up to the boys. Mm-hmm. And so he says, "Okay, boys, listen. Um, when I'm gone, <coughs> when I'm gone, I want you guys to to uh, get together and run this farm. Mm-hmm. It's um." I, this farm run. This farm is. I'm giving it to both of you guys. Mm-hmm. I want you of all you guys. I want you all to uh, take care of this farm and make it last as long as you can, for your kids, their kids, and generations on. And so once he passes, um, all four boys try to cut off, um, take a quarter of the land. They like one each takes a quarter, and uh, by doing this, uh, after like about a couple of years, they notice their land's not like you know not as good as it used to be like they're losing like the crops there's like you know fruits dying here and there and eventually you get to the realization uh just skipping forward uh, um be the yeah here we go and skipping forward just to like the realization no i um, want to hear the full story i never heard the full story about the um, so when he was alive he divided the land between them no no he four? he gave the entire land to all four of the boys the boys themselves because they hate each other mm. they divide themselves like i get this corner you get this corner and so on and he passed away right he passed away okay and by doing this like take care of taking care of um uh one corner each mm-hmm. uh, because they're not fully experienced like like for instance one boy knows how to water properly mm-hmm. one boy knows how to give soil properly mm. and so with this knowledge that they have limited knowledge their farm is slowly dying because it's not getting like the full nutrition it needs mm-hmm. mm. and so after years and years of like seeing this they start realizing if we work together we could probably see our farm you know mm. and so eventually they decide to bond like um get together and um you know just work together and save their farm mm-hmm. and um i'm not sure how where the moral comes in but basically the moral is um if you get like i think the father actually showed this to him when we were kids if you get a bunch of sticks one each and you snap it if you br- if you like you know put pressure on it, it's mm-hmm. gonna break mm-hmm. but if you get a bunch of sticks tied together mm-hmm. it's not gonna break at all no matter how much force you put on it so mm-hmm. they start using that lesson to rebuild their farm and you know keep it going for the generations on that's a beautiful story yeah yeah and i never, never know the details before, before. Yeah, yeah i only come back as like he's dying as like there's one stick and like okay see yeah. it breaks easy there's five sticks he doesn't yeah, yeah. break but i never knew that it was like really a they came to that part by themselves from seeing the suffering from dissipating and not working together yeah right, right. and like it like just you know not not be able to each of them help because again this story is like beautiful mm. the 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 essence of like as humans no one can do everything mm-hmm. no. you know and we all have a special skill or talent in a special field that actually collaboratively help each other so y- you really cannot do uh, as much uh, if you're like thinking that you're going to do all, all of it by itself mm-hmm. no, no no yeah like everyone has their own their own talents or their own you know specialization mm-hmm. that they're good at society can't function with just you know one part of you know the industry oh, like engineers like yeah. people say oh you, you know engineering is the best or whatever but really we need you need arts you need english all of it all mm-hmm. of it comes together mm-hmm. to create culture mm-hmm. and to create a society so not one single thing is better than the other Correct. in terms of you know what you do or yeah. what your specialization is that's actually pretty good yeah and, and i and i didn't understand that until like when a while you know because my whole life i've been like I can work fast or faster than people around me, but or uh, more than other people. But at the same time, like, why should I ha- stay with anyone? They're too slow. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. So it's like this is interesting because uh, uh, the the paradigm shift came for me is like, dude, you've been doing this your whole life and you've been hitting a wall. Right. So you need to like recognize where you're coming from. You know, you need to recognize that your true power and value to the society is not by just being by yourself. It's by looking out for your friends. It's by always giving a helping hand. And it's also by asking, like, again, like we said, by asking help from your friends around you. You know, even like this whole podcast started by love. It's Mm -hmm. because I love these guys so much. 
and I wanted us to have like a, a fun time together and at the same time share that knowledge and information from all our experiences and actually teach each other and learn ourselves. You know, we have books, we increase our knowledge, we talk about it, we help more people, and we help ourselves. Of it's course, yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting. And uh, the concept that you are strongest when you're alone, the no, yeah, that's a myth. That maybe no. that's like a like a Western thing, right? It's true to an extent. Maybe. It could be. Yeah, you know, you can be so strong by yourself, but you're gonna need help eventually. Yeah, everybody needs help. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, there's no like one person, you know. You can there's say no that one man team. You can say that you're, uh, you know, introverted or anything, but mm -hmm. yeah, of course, you're always gonna need someone to help you with something. You're never gonna just do everything on your own. Yeah, yeah, and 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 yeah, man, it just the dilemma of existence right now is that you seeing everyone living in this cubicle or like a oh, place so by bad. themselves or like they're isolated from anybody else mm -hmm. yeah. and it's actually it's it's good it's privacy independence and that's also essential but it's you're supposed to use that independence to help the collective to help the society to help the community not to just like be Absolutely. in the yeah in helping yourself you know yeah. mm -hmm. well, what's the point of being yeah. here then and these these corporations like they feed off of that you just went right in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Which corporation? Yeah. <laughs> List them. Name them. List them off. Uh, we got Walmart. <laughs> yeah, Walmart got like that <coughs> geriatrics league. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they want you. They want you like you know live by yourself because they know that like I don't know. There's a lot behind it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, I said. It, yeah, it's there's you're easy to, to get swayed if you're by yourself. Of course, you don't. Ha yeah. You're not solid. You don't have feet in the ground. If you, if you mm. go, if you go shop by yourself, you're gonna see candy. Like, well, I want candy. You see, like, uh, I don't know, toys. Oh, I want toys. If you go with your parents, they're gonna say, no, we don't need that. No, we don't need that. We know what you need. You know, like. It's a good example. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. a good yeah. example. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like eating gummy bears. Like, <laughs> it's time to live by myself. <laughs> oh, he's like, I eat cream, all the like sugars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's what he think living by yourself is. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get an example for like. But but that's know. beautiful. Yeah, you're talking about like dopamine hits and yeah, the, the yeah. stuff that is like more of uh, like instant pleasure. It's not really mm, ever meaning yeah. to you. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not. It's not good. Uh, like instant instant pleasure is is never good. Because yeah. reality, you want more. In the real world, doesn't work that way, right? Like, yeah. if you want something, like say, if you want a a new car, right? You can't just get it like that, right? But all these instant pleasures that we have now, like you know, pornography, mm. um, you know, fast food, Dopamine you can get them now. like that. Even even like getting a car, you can go to a dealership, you can sign your you know, you sign your credit score away, whatever, and they'll give you the car. But you'll be paying like thousands of dollars the next month and mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you're in debt. The car gets taken away. You mm -hmm. lose everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also lose. You also lose the value of the journey. You mm -hmm. use the value of working towards yes. that goal, and that is where the real value lies. It's not in acquiring it. It's how you acquired it. It's working towards that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, learning from mm -hmm. your your progress. And plus, like when you get that thing instantly. It's fun for like maybe two, three weeks. The next thing you know, you're you're on the board of it. That's true. You mm -hmm. won't go for the next thing. Yeah, over However, excitation, yeah. If you like work for like you work for to get this TV, <coughs> you work so hard, every dime goes toward this TV. Mm -hmm. And once you get it, you treasure it. Of and course. And if you try to let go of it, it's so hard because you work so hard to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. It also teaches you like how to value things, you know, yeah. placing value, not, not just treating everything as, you know, easily attainable. Like, oh, my car broke, I'll buy a new one, whatever. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I won't take care of it. Once you, if you, but you, if you work hard for it, that means that you'll do more to ensure that you take care of that thing, and it also makes you value things more. I, I want to go deep, like on the, your point, Ray. So you're saying that the the whole idea is that pleasure is in the journey; it's not in a goal. Mm -hmm. Because once mm -hmm. you had that goal, it's like ah, okay, I got it. Yeah, it worked too good, too good for the car. Yeah. It's just like it's just any other car, man. It gets from point A to point B. How much can you be fascinated right. by it? You know. Yeah. So, but I want you to explain, like, what do you mean by like? Because that's the truth. You know, people who have like a dopamine uh, toxicity or trying to like have that dopamine hypes all the time. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? Sugar is porn, whatever, mm -hmm. and drugs, and they try to. Uh, 
think that I want to go for a goal mm. and it's supposed to be fast, you know, and th they're not going to feel good. Yes, they might force themselves because, again, that's a mentality thing. Mm. They might force themselves to do something they hate, which I did, for their word, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but that's not the case at all. Yeah, like, let's, let's give an example of, like, the goal of becoming rich, uh -huh. right? Some people, they win the lottery and they become rich instantly, right? But then what happens to them? Oh, they die. They, Most of them die, right? They spend all yeah, their money. And like they, suicide or like somebody right, killed them or debt, something. Yeah. Something bad. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. why? It's because they didn't have the same journey that others did mm -hmm. by working to become rich. They just became rich, rich instantly. So they don't have the experience mm -hmm. or the knowledge to manage their money. You know, they don't know how to spend it. They don't mm -hmm. know how to save money. They just, you know. Same thing for being born to rich. They don't mm -hmm. know how, you know how like, you know, they don't value money. They just spend it like it's yeah. nothing. That's why, like, yeah. you know, like spoiled, spoiled kids, like they don't value anything really. They don't, they don't care about anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're always covered or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess mentality like you're indestructible or invincible or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they believe that they're, you know, better. They believe that they're literally a, a better, like better species than <laughs> these other humans. <laughs> Literally, yeah. if you look at you look at these people like they're like they're like they're animals. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like I look at like like poor people like oh look at that dog you know, look at that poor like that. <laughs> they want to pet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it insane? <laughs> yeah, that they see a dog it'd be so cute, but yeah, they see yeah. a human being hungry. It's like ah, I'm not gonna give him oh, ten bucks. He's gonna yeah. get. He's gonna do That's drugs. That's course. the point. That's yeah. messed up. If you think about that. That's the point. They treat dogs better than humans. Mm -hmm. Sad. Man. And they're like, they're out loud. They would say, Oh, I, uh, I of course, I love dogs more than humans. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's terrifying. Did, that, did a dog ever hurt you? Like, yeah. what, what, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> you know, for real, what is going Like, you're not understanding you're preferring other species <laughs> <laughs> more than your species. <laughs> you're supposed to share the love with anybody in need, and that's the point of it. Of course, to be aware and vigilant but do not get yourself in like weird situations or like you know see somebody beating some guys like i'm gonna go help him no or like you know but in general you're supposed to have that love as i if there is help i can do if there is value i will provide you know because it's always give mm. and you're supposed to give along like the system the law of this earth because bro i when uh and when i went through this period I like was almost like my whole idea of reality was like crashing. I was like, okay, so I know like the religious route. Let me take the energetic route, the persecution and like the astrology. Mm -hmm. And at the end of all of that, it just came back to you are part of the collective, which is in every like faith or, or, or like mantra or, or, or like energy field is like we are part of the whole group. You know, and by not understanding that, uh, I wanted to know, so what is my part? Your part is to provide value first, because uh, most people who doesn't have friends is like, they don't know how to share, right? Because it's a normal thing when you're growing up, you have to like to play with kids, you have to share to play, right? And uh, when you go up, when you grow up, it's like you've been doing only for self-serving. Mm. You never did anything for like, intentionally for like maybe maybe donate or something but intentionally th that is not the norm that people try to go out of their way to help people or that's not the goal it's like i'm i'm, I'm full of love i want to help everybody mm -hmm. i help my provide value because the only way it goes is you have to give a lot to get and then after that yeah go ahead it's also the same thing with like if you look at like like a, a job what people what kids want to look at look forward to when they want to grow up Mm -hmm. One of the jobs they least look at is teaching. Like teaching, even though it, it does pay low, like people just don't people just don't look at it properly. Um, and the other thing is that they just don't see um, you know teaching others as like a career. Like, why should I spend my time teaching other kids? They're just gonna annoy me. They're gonna bother me. You know, let let someone else take care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, like teaching is such an underrated job that no one really cares about. But we need it like uh, that's that's how we function like that's how we you know like that's we get better as human from knowledge but i actually want to touch on that point from the book right mm. yeah so it's one of the ways yes 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 actually i'll, I'll close the the heater
And yeah. I want to go back. So remember what he said on that part? I think so. Yeah, he said, um, you know, one of the ways that the devil enters the mind of, uh, of the drifters is through the minds of uh, children. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when you're an adult, you have a fully functioning brain, or you should have a fully yeah. functioning brain by then, right? Uh, kids, they're very impressionable. So they, they, their brains aren't fully formed, and they're very susceptible to becoming, um, uh, to, to mm-hmm. forming their thoughts and their mentality around uh-huh. new ideas. So if, like, if you teach a, ki- a kid to be racist, right? Uh, like I throughout his throughout his life, it's yeah. very hard for them to yeah. to change that behavior because mm-hmm. because uh, a child's um, you know their their brains are like sponges. What they absorb, they'll keep, they'll retain, mm-hmm. and it's very hard to break that that habit. Mm-hmm. So that's why there's a, there's a thing called like generational hate, right? If you teach a child to hate, yeah. you know, it's very hard to break that cycle. It's like you know. It's like repetition, right? I think in the book it mentions that too, like repetition. Mm -hmm. You do something over and over and over again, it becomes a a rhythm. And it's very hard to break that rhythm Mm -hmm. once you're in it. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to mention that like, um, yeah. They say like the the saying that you can't teach old dog new tricks, which is, is, is true to humans too. Like when a person becomes old, their brain is already like, fully developed where it's just at that point where it doesn't want to learn anymore it's you know it's that's why like what what uh, uh what ray was saying um yeah it's very it's very difficult to uh, teach adults but like at the kids like they'll learn anything like the, the you could do like something you can like hit your head and curse or something that kid's gonna hear that and start doing that thinking that like oh i should start doing this because yeah start repeating yeah 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. exactly and uh the the main it's true the main part is like the the rhythm is you can re- reverse it though because it works both ways you can yeah you know so if you have that pattern which is actually proven in science too it's called neural pathways so if you kept the same thought and the same intention over and over and over and over that's why when people like go through some heavy stuff the main part is like their 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 comfort they're used to keep going back to that memory or that idea or that place that they experienced that trauma you know yeah but the same thing you know from like the hermetic principles is like there is op- everything is the like duality so like if you're feeling so bad you can still feel so good it's still the same thing still the end of the same end of the same stick mm-hmm. but you just have to put what are you looking forward to what do you want to and keep that on like the rhythm pattern yeah, yeah. every day practice 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 and then yeah. from there it's just amazing you know because right, you're already right. like it becomes restructur- like a part of you yeah you're restructuring your mind yeah. correct yeah exactly. and, and and it's it's interesting even he said in that book too you're gonna people who make like their first million or the first 100k it's mm. easy to make money after that it's not because they're smarter it's just they learn you yeah, know, they yeah. learn like the same pattern, the same manifestation, mm-hmm. the same positive energy. Bro, when in that book, when he started saying, I am the negative energy, like, oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I know so many guys are like negative energy. <laughs> 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 but when he said that it's actually clicked you know because he is the negative energy because like mo- when, when you learn when you grow up like for me at least as most suffering is internal it's like uh, for going through doing that same thing to yourself nobody's mm. doing that for you nobody's forcing you to think about the horrible stuff that you've been we are like programmed to learn and keep going like either a lesson to learn mm. from it and just keep pushing forward there is no way around like sitting and dwelling on the past he exactly said that part remember yeah Mm -hmm. yeah like um a real world like like something i've experienced from that like what they were talking about in the book is for example like going to the gym Mm -hmm. right when you're first starting out going to the gym is like you know you might be sore you know you don't want to go you want to be like judged by people right Mm -hmm. it's like a new thing and it's it's uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but once you start getting into that pattern of keeping going every day going to the gym every day that becomes a part of like who you are really mm-hmm. like if where if you don't go you feel off you feel wrong if you don't if you miss like a day you're like something's off like i need to get my ass back in the gym like mm-hmm. i need to keep on improving myself so that 
the rhythm it, it becomes a part of who you are, and mm-hmm. that translates into a harder work work ethic mm-hmm. and a, and, a, and a drive to improve yourself. That's beautiful. Yeah, how do you improve work ethic as a as a person in general? Like, how do you do stuff better day in day out? I think it goes back to what you were saying around um, being other people who keep you in check. Mm-hmm. Like having people or surrounding yourself with people who will keep you accountable mm-hmm. and will keep you on the right path, mm-hmm. as well as uh, personal responsibility, like you know owning up to your own responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, owning up to your own mistakes and also um, just just starting out, like just just uh, trying out um, a new things that could help improve your improve your own life. Like, for example, uh, waking up earlier every day. Mm-hmm. Right. You can start that that habit mm-hmm. and that habit will lead on, will lead to, to new uh, newer habits like mm-hmm. other habits. You know, if you wake up earlier, you have more time to work out. Mm-hmm. That leads to other good habits, mm-hmm. eating healthier. You're feeling better right? now. So you already you're already feeling better, mm-hmm. and that will translate into other benefits to your life, right? That's actually pretty good, yeah. 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 What about you, Ramis? What do you think uh, prompt anybody's work ethic or, like, your perception of it? Um, more <laughs> of, like, breaking habits, really. Uh, one thing that's very common um, almost anywhere is... Mm-hmm having caffeine as a morning routine oh. you know people need caffeine to wake up mm-hmm. well apparently caffeine is not the best thing for you you know it's that's good correct. to have no, that's true, yeah. but it shouldn't be something that wakes you up if you depend on caffeine you're gonna crash hard and it's gonna get to the point where you can drink more caffeine just stay awake and it becomes a drug to you mm-hmm. so the best thing to do really is like try to figure out what else can you do to avoid Uh, what else can you do to wake yourself up? Like either you could take cold showers, mm-hmm. um, either you go for a workout, mm-hmm. either you can, you know, just something that really doesn't depend on consuming something. Mm. Because like when you t- when you when you drink something, when you take in something to your <coughs> body, you're depending on that object that that sustenance to, you know, cure your tiredness. But if you depend on yourself, where it's like working out or force yourself to k- take a cold shower it's all on you like there's no there's not really any ingredients that's like you know that can like make you crash you know what about food though of course you need food <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is foods obviously food's good to have but you shouldn't live to eat you know what i mean you should yeah. eat to live because yeah. if you if you live your life enjoying food like oh, I can't wait to eat this burger, I can't wait to eat that mac and cheese, then obviously when you stop, you're going to like, you know, feel like sick and everything because that was a drug to you. Mm-hmm. Food mm. At that point, food was a drug to you. But if you eat it as if like, you know, just to live, then it's not going to be an issue when you like, you know, you miss a meal here and there. You're saying like don't get addicted. Of course, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, go ahead. I would say that, you know, of course, like things like food can be addicted. But I would say like, most things can become addictive yeah right right like even even good things yeah right e- people I believe so there's people who are addicted to like exercise mm-hmm. but it, be- it like it's becomes to a point where it becomes a bad thing so i would say it's actually a good way i would say a, a good uh a rule or a good value mm-hmm. is always keep moderation right always be a moderate with whatever you do mm-hmm. right like um eating healthy right mm-hmm. there there's a point where eating healthy if that becomes like such a uh, integral central mm-hmm. part of your life where it's like it becomes negative right if you're always worried like every single thing you oh, eat yeah, yeah, can't yeah. enjoy anything yeah, then yeah. it becomes negative so i would say just always have uh, keep moderation in mind that's pretty good so what ramiz was talking about was the dopamine starvation mm-hmm. is like you're you're starting your day without any caffeine without any stimulants so you're not food too or at least in the morning or like you do like a fasted walk or something so with that it's it's rough at the beginning though but you come out of it bro you have so much energy You, you didn't even like for my experience i didn't even believe that i can have that much energy without anything 
but it's all was was in you you know but all these systems that is normal to function when you wake up you just shut it down because they're expecting that caffeine they're expecting that you know whatever thing they're going to give you energy in the morning the bang or whatever <laughs> you know they're expecting that thing to go ahead i was going to mention <laughs> i i watched this i'm not i'm not 100% sure how true this is yeah. but it was pretty interesting just to uh just to see uh-huh. um they say back in the day, uh, like when we used to hunt for food and everything, the average human can last three days without a meal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Because it's because our bodies adapted to, you know, we have to hunt for food. And if you can't find food, you Fasting, know, yeah. we have to like kind of like starve ourselves for a couple of days until we find, find, find something. Uh-huh. So we're kind of like, you know, running off of like just our energy we have left. Mm-hmm. So same for, I mean, today's bodies, you know, <clears throat> like s- sure we changed a little bit, but I mean, overall our nature is still basically the same. Um, we don't need, you know, there's people out there who are anorexic who eat like only once every two, three days. And obviously they're killing themselves, but they're still alive. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but I'm saying is moderation. Yeah, exactly. Moderation. Like you could eat like once a day, <laughs> twice a day, but it shouldn't be something where, um, like I said before, um, something that you look forward to. A meal is just a meal, you know, for sustenance. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like, oh, I'm looking to eat that part or like that thing or that uh, interesting thing. You know, mm-hmm. you're supposed to be what's up. My I'll use this. Okay. He's coming back now. That's fine. I'll give it back to him. Uh, like you're not supposed. Oh, because my voice is away a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I can speak freely from far. You're fine. So, uh, with with the so you you brought a couple of good points. So you brought the the dopamine starvation, and then you brought the understanding of uh, that fasting or like you don't have to eat three or four times a day right you don't you don't have to uh always be feeding yourself the like all day you know munching on stuff you know eating stuff and okay quick tip for anybody who's listening it is actually pretty good very like two or three simple methods that's gonna make you feel better lose weight feel healthier rule number one is time restricted feeding you have to stop eating before bed at least five hours and that had different benefits to it so that have that you when you eat sugars before bed uh you don't really have good sleep i mean i'm sure you guys should like try to eat something and go to bed like you're knocked out because of the sugar coma but you wake up next day you know you're not feeling well rested right uh so that's one uh, second thing if uh they can delay breakfast or they can do any kind of motion before breakfast you know that'd be amazing mm. and uh the third thing which is like the, the a huge topic which that's what i'm like doing these little videos because there is so many things that we eat and we think it's good for us and it's not mm-hmm. And like, did you see the government coming up with the, the platform that uh, Lucky Charms is healthier than steak? Oh, that's disgusting. What? You saw that? That's no disgusting. Way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it right now. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going <laughs> to I was just gonna say it depends on who makes a steak. <laughs> <laughs> when would they had a bad steak, bro? Yeah, they probably, they probably hired like some guy off the street, make us a steak. They tested it. Oh, it's terrible. They try Lucky Charms. Oh, it's way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the concept of uh, e- uh, steak is bad because usually people would add next to it like the uh, sauce, mashed potatoes, the, yeah. the sauce, the sugars. At that point, yeah. I guess y- so, yeah. Yeah, oh. but again, the, the, the option, the other option is for you just to eat straight sugars. Yeah. No, nah, that makes sense. That's, that's that nothing no good sense. about cereal. It's grains. What? The only good thing about it is that it fills you. That's the only good thing about it. Right. And the milk, probably. Yeah. I think uh, oatmeal is a lot better. Of course, way better. There's no sugar. Yeah. Yeah. It's Freshly like made oatmeal. Protein. Yeah. I don't know about cereal. Like, I think cereal is like one of the worst things that you can yeah. eat. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so breakfast. much sugar. Like, I don't understand why they push it on kids <laughs> so much, like in the country. Like, the only good cereal there was, you ever heard of Kicks? 
like that yeah. white ball, ce- like corn sugar, like the corn, corn, sorry, corn cereal. It's like a corn ball. There's literally nothing in it, which is why it's probably the best one. It's <laughs> really? Like, yeah. However, growing up, we put sugar in it. <laughs> Oh, uh, it doesn't have sugar. Let me add my own sugar in that. So, <laughs> no, I think one of the, everyone does this. No, I think it's one, of the, one of the best ones was the uh, the mini wheats. You guys ever had those? Yes, yeah, uh, Cheerios. Uh, it's like a oh wheat thins, not wheat thins. Um, not with wheat the frosting on top, right? Like yeah. uh, wheat, oh, yeah, wheat and raisins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, this stuff I tried it one time. Yeah. It cuts your throat. It is so oh, dry. What's it called? Sharp. Yeah, the raisin and wheat. A raisin know? brand? Yeah. Oh, yes. I hate raisins. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. That's probably a good thing about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat fibers? Uh, I'll lay the story no, and test them. I, I don't understand why people say, like, oh, steak, that's really bad for you. Like, how is it bad for you? I it's mean, because it's these, these vegans. It's the vegans? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's saying, oh, you're eating meat, you're killing these animals, you're eating all their, you know, their trash, whatever. Uh-huh. You know, they're probably going to say, yeah, cereal's better because there's no meat in it. You know, yeah, but but that but doesn't meat, make it better. Though. Yeah, the meat is the most ne- like you need nutrient, meat. nutrient yeah. dense meat, yeah. thing for you. You need meat for heme iron. Actually, mm-hmm. iron from meat is more absorbed than like literally iron supplements. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. by like folds, vitamin B twelve, which vegans doesn't have. They have to supplement. It's not the same amount you get from like this. And plus, this. when they put right. all these supplements in there, like all these you know different. <laughs> These different like chemicals, it's not it's not gonna be good for you. Why just go for a natural source? Yeah, thank exactly. you so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. It's I like agree. a pill over pills. It's not worth yeah. it. Yeah, yep, I agree. Because like the the nutrition you get from steak, there's the only thing that can top it is liver. But mm. other than that, I don't see anything else on the same realm. I yeah. mean, eggs is good for cooling, but it doesn't have the same nutrients as steak, mm-hmm. the micronutrients and the trace minerals and all that beautiful stuff, you know. Yeah. No, s- uh, steak, liver, of course, is king. But steak. <laughs> shout out liver king. Shout out liver king. <laughs> he, he, he just, it, this <laughs> one, he got the best name. Even he's doing steroid right now, but he is just like liver is still king, regardless of this guy. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys eat liver? No, I've I had it. I've, I've had, had it before, though. I've had it some years. My dad eats it. He eats like probably like once, oh. twice, a couple of months. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah. I've had it like once or twice, like a couple of years ago. Do you like have it? You just ate elk though. So yeah. do you have like a problem with it or like? No, it's no. I enjoy it. It's just that because it's being processed in my kitchen, I'm seeing it being made. I feel a little disgusted. You know, like when oh. you see, when you see from like the actual carcass all the way down to like, you know, making it. Mm. Like that's the best part. It is, yeah. So fresh. But Real, to me, I just like this was a living thing at once. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You don't like to like associate it with like living things. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then you're a vegan, bro. Yeah, and you don't know it so. yet. Just become vegan, man. Yeah, you don't know. But it I like yet. meat. I like oh. chicken. Huh. I don't care about chickens. Chickens are <laughs> <they're Yeah>. birds. <laughs> chicken feet. Chicken. Uh, chicken feet. It's yeah, bro. The the best liver I had is like from this uh, cow we slaughtered and like that eat. And then I took part of the liver and mm-hmm. added some lemon on it. Mm. Bro, it's so delicious, so fresh. Mm. I haven't had liver in a long time. I think maybe I'll try it again. next Sunday. Yeah. Do you guys like eat spicy food? Yeah, of I course. Do. Yeah, like oh. jalapeno. Or well, what? He's got a condition oh <laughs> hey, like they say it's easy coming in but it's hard coming out <laughs> all right well, well we'll just put the uh, sriracha on the side then yeah yeah sriracha is not bad yeah maybe yeah, just a couple of uh Tabasco. like yeah or like you know sorrento like two or three in the whole yeah two or three pounds those. we're gonna make yeah i'm gonna make you one guys yeah it's yeah. gonna be uh, i know how to make it really good Mm. spreading love and knowledge and hoping because again not everybody is in the same the 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 state of the collective is because of the people in the world like we're we're not really experiencing anything different from our state most people are assholes you know and it's true you know so and it's greedy right Mm. and that's that's like that that's what's displayed right now it's just greed that it will actually kill kids to make money actually go to wars and kill innocent people to make money you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. it is the whole greed and money and collect and scarcity mindset you know I'm, uh, nobody gonna help me nobody wanna you know I, i'm gonna take everything from myself mm-hmm. exactly and that's the exact opposite yeah of existence yeah and ex- especially when it came back to the uh, the book when he was saying that cigarettes is actually more beneficial or like the first way the devil would go through mm-hmm. not even alcohol 
And I was like, what? I was like, yeah, once you get a pack or two a day, become one yeah. a regular smoker, then it's easy. Yeah. You can add alcohol, you can add weed, you can add all kind of mm-hmm. things attached to it. I was like, wow. Yeah. I it mean, is really a sneaker thing. Alcohol alone is like really bad, but cigarettes, I mean, that's like the worst thing that you yeah. can do. It's like the most unhealthy thing yes, that sir. you can do. I agree. I agree. That's pretty cool. All right, guys. Thank you for wrapping it up. Of course. Of Have course. a beautiful day. And yeah. we'll see you next time.